Okay, I think that's I think that's good. You're kind of perched on the edge of a candle and a tissue box because if you've been following me for a while, you know that I do not use my tripod as much as I should. So I apologize if you start shaking and randomly fall, but I also, I'm just, I'm not gonna use my tripod. So, um, hi, this is Paige. Hi, um, I think you already know that if you clicked on this video, but yeah, I'm Paige. Um, I wanted to film a Q&A because people have been asking me these questions and um, I'm going to Denver, Colorado in a couple of days, which I said in my last video or the video before that one. I can't keep track, um, but I'm going to Denver in a couple of days. And so I'm going to be filming the entire trip across the country where, well, a couple, across a few states. Um, we're taking a train there. So I am filming that entire process, which is really exciting. So because I'm filming all of that, I would like to get this out of the way and just like have this publishing, you know, so that I can really focus on enjoying my trip and also like filming it for you guys to see because I'm really excited to be able to share the entire process of train travel and also visiting my aunt in Colorado. I've never been there before. So it's kind of like a fun new adventure for me and for all of us. So um, yeah, I wanted to start off by answering some questions that you guys asked me. I wrote them down in notes so I'd remember. Um, and I'm re I really haven't thought about my answers to them yet. This is very much like gut check, like here I am. I'm gonna just tell you what I'm feeling, you know? So um, basically the questions range from deep questions to just general kind of broad subjects and also like advice on things. I'm gonna start with just things related to my life because I know that people have been asking me like, you know, what I'm doing and how life is since it's been so long. So I'm gonna start with just things about my life, like I said. So the first question that I got is my plans for college and my studies and my career, which all of these things are relating to each other in one way, shape or form, but they've all changed incredibly in the past few months. In the past like year, things, my entire plan has just, <laughs> I know that's like a very weird way to explain it, but um, yeah, my plans have changed drastically. So. First disclaimer that I want to just put out here is I think college is wonderful. I still am battling my thoughts towards college for my own self, but for people in general, I think college can be wonderful. I think that it gives a lot of opportunities for people to learn more than they're taught in high school. I do believe that high school education is focused on like the core classes more than they do on like a specific study. And I believe that it really helps people to learn more about their field so they can kind of just keep moving up the ranks in their jobs, if that makes sense. But I also believe that if your job and your career does not require a degree and it is something that you can research on your own or you can take like a internship for or you can learn in high school enough of what you need to know, I don't think college is necessary for everyone and I don't think it should be a requirement to being like good enough in this society. Like I feel like college is just an extra step that you can take and people should take if they need it, but I don't think that they should have to just to prove themselves, you know? So that's something I was battling quite a bit because also another thing with college is that if you're getting a degree that's very focused on a specific part of your career and you're taking a lot of like, I call them fluff classes. Like if you're taking like algebra and pre-calculus and trigonometry and stuff while you're studying and you want to be an English teacher, like sure, I think things can relate to each other and they can definitely intertwine, but I feel like there can be a lot of like fluff classes you're paying for that you don't necessarily need. And so I was battling with that a lot because what I want to do for my career involves conservation and journalism and biology a little bit and it involves a lot of like just journalism and environmental conservation. I want to be an environmental conservationist and I want to be involved in traveling and exploring and writing about it. And so because of that, there's a lot of fluff classes I don't need and there's a lot of things that I could learn on my own without college. But in general, my ultimate goal is to work in renewable energy. I would like to be a part of the new generation working towards alternative energy sources rather than just coal and mining all of the, you know, things that we use that are harming the environment. So because of that, because of all of that combined, um, my personal journey, I believe is involving some college, but it's definitely not involving like the basic, go live in a dorm, get a degree for four years, kind of figure it out, kind of plan. Snoopy, my tortoise is being loud. Shh. Um, my path does not involve that. And I am thinking of doing some online college courses and maybe getting a degree online. Um, I'm still kind of looking into that. That's definitely just like, this is just the beginning of that process. Um, I know it's a little bit late. I'm turning 19 soon. So it has been like a year since I was supposed to be applying, but I've been taking a year to really think about it because rushing into that kind of decision just isn't worth it to me, especially when I have the opportunity to do the research I need to. And I'm very lucky I can live at home and I can work for now and then just kind of like do my research about what I wanna do. 
So like I said, my career goal is to be involved in conservation. I'm looking at internships to travel this coming winter to other countries to help with conservation efforts, beach cleanups, tagging endangered species, that kind of thing. Like anything involved in the environment, specifically the ocean, I am very much interested in. I'm getting scuba dive certified very soon. Watch out for that. I'll definitely be filming my process of that. Um, so that's another thing that I'm doing. And I am going to take some certificate classes. And I don't know if you've heard about this, but there are these things called certificates where it's not a degree, so you don't go four years and you don't pay the large amount of money that you would with college. But you take like a between six weeks and five month long course. And when you finish the course, they give you a certificate saying, I did this, I researched, I read, I studied, and here's what I've done. And so it's kind of just like another way to show your future employer or to show like a business that you studied and you've done what you needed to do. You just didn't necessarily go to college. Um, so I'm gonna do those in advance. Even if I do do my online college like I would like, I think the certificate programs are really, really useful for what I wanna do, especially because there's one that I found that I can do forestry. And so forestry is also something I'm interested in. Like deforestation is a huge threat to the planet and being involved in protecting those wild places on planet Earth are very important. So that was always something interesting to me as well. So basically, when I last talked about my plans, my, my goals and my career goals and my study goals was always to be involved in nature, but I've kind of shifted it where I'm more open. So before I was very, very locked into like one specific field and I wasn't really interested in doing anything else. And now I've really taken my time to travel some more, open my mind and think that there are so many opportunities. There are so many species of animals and so many different like bodies of water and places with trees. There are so many things I can study and I want to take the next few years till I'm like in my mid twenties and I would like to travel and experience working with all those different fields until I kind of find the one that calls to me, you know? So basically I'm just leaving myself open to all those opportunities and I'm starting that process the end of this summer. I'm starting one of those certificates in August and then um, hopefully traveling by December. So yeah, that's a whole other thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into it deeper as the time goes on um, and I don't want to make this video longer than 20 minutes so I'm just going to like I'm just gonna end it there. I'm basically keeping myself open and I think that college can be wonderful. I'm just figuring out my path like one step at a time. So yeah, um, the next question that I got is, well, my plans for traveling. So um, there's a few things I'm doing just like currently. I'm going to Denver obviously in a week or not a week, a couple of days. I'm gonna be in Denver in a week. And, um, and then I'm going to be going to the Salmon Islands, of course, again this summer. Um, I, I'm still moving there as soon as I physically can. So I'm just kind of looking for places to live and talking to some businesses and seeing where I can work. And um, that's just a work in progress. So we always go there every summer. It's my home. It's my favorite place on this entire planet. So um, we're still going there, of course. And then um, I have some really exciting plans for my 19th birthday, kind of a surprise plan I'm gonna share with you guys eventually. And then me and my best friend are going on a trip in August that is also gonna be a surprise that I will post on here. Um, but it's a road trip to a very far away place and I'm very excited, so <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see, what do I do after collecting crystals? This is the question that related to my spirituality a little bit, which I can get into my next few questions. Um, I just keep them. <laughs> my collection is not one that I'm selling anything of as right now. Um, right now, my collection of crystals is what I see as an investment. So my crystals are gaining value over time as they become more rare. And so I keep them, I admire them, I travel with them, I love them, and they just enjoy their shelves in my room, in my house. And um, maybe in the future I'd sell some, but as of right now, they all hold a special place in my heart. So I just keep them, I admire them. It's basically just like a collection, like any other thing, like if you collected like baseball cards or if you collected like cool old paintings, um, they just live with me. <laughs> so yeah. Um, so speaking of spirituality, kind of getting into that, um, I was asked, how is my spirituality now? Like how am I, where's my head at when it comes to my spirituality? Um, and so nothing has changed with the fact that I still am very proud of what I practice. I'm very proud of what I believe in and I'm very, very open to learning everything I need to learn. Um, the only things that have really like changed and evolved in the past year 
is that I found that more of the practices that I love doing are related to now being a part of nature. So whereas before, like I felt a lot of pressure to push myself of like, I have to make these recipes, I have to do these oils, I have to make these herbal tinctures. I still love doing all of that. But now I found like my spirituality manifests itself when I'm outside hiking or when I am involving myself in a conservation movement. I feel even more connected to eclectic witchcraft, paganism, all of that. I feel more connected to my spirituality when I am doing things that just like light my soul on fire, you know? So really nothing's changed. Um, my spirituality is still very much a part of my life. I'm just kind of allowing it to change and evolve as it goes. So I'm trying to educate myself on all spiritualities and kind of just like, I don't know, just like I said, like learn as I go. And, um, incorporate more nature things into that so you know not putting so much pressure on myself to have a strict regimen when it comes to my spirituality um that's the thing that i'm working on in therapy right now is not holding myself to such a high standard of where i have to stick to something every single day and if i don't then it just means game over back to square one you know um, i still want to stick to things every day but not in a way where everything will fall apart if i don't so that's like a big thing that i'm holding myself to right now is well, the opposite of what I just said, of not holding myself to it. Um, basically, my spirituality is how I perceive the world. It always has been. It's how I connect to animals. And I'm going to do that in the ways that bring me happiness and not just because I feel like I have to put an image out there of like how spiritual I am. You know, there's a definitely a, there's a big thing in the spiritual community where it's like, if you don't practice a certain way or take these aesthetic photos of like your rituals or your practices, and if you don't do it a certain way, way or timing then you're not good enough and I've, i'm so tired of that i'm so tired of that so that's not happening anymore so yeah you can find me being my most spiritual self when i'm on a hike or when i'm petting a raccoon or something so yeah um and then someone asked um let's see advice for reconnecting with nature so kind of going into that is um if you feel distant from nature it's because we have this mindset in society of we're apart from nature we're not a part of it and so it's like if you are feeling like you're standing outside and you feel like you are just this separate entity that's just like holding back and you feel separate from everything try to really ground yourself into the earth take a moment every day five minutes ten minutes fifteen seconds put your feet on the grass i don't care if it's wet i don't care if it's cold really feel the sensation of what the earth is feeling that morning. Like if there's dew drops on the ground, feel that. If there's snow on the ground, feel it safely for a certain amount of time, you know? And if it's really, really hot, feel that, you know? So it's like to connect to nature is just to really connect to yourself again. It's to really find yourself, find what you love doing and really just admire what's around you because people rarely look up and people are always looking down. I am, I am one of those people that can get caught up in that. Um, and so just take the time to look up, look around, enjoy your scenery, and um, yeah, thank the animals for being god dang cute. <laughs> um, let's see. How to deal with mental health relating to the earth dying and doomsday mindsets. Oh, this is a deep one. Oh, this is a deep one. So I don't want to take, like, whoa, that's not English. I do not want to make this video longer than 20 minutes. So although we're getting there i'm just gonna try to like go over the basics of how i feel about this um basically when it comes to that doomsday mindset of like why should i help the planet it's already dying why should i recycle when like nobody else does why should i care because like we have like 50 years left until the oxygen is being sucked out of the blah, 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 blah. you know it can be really really hard and so i understand that feeling because I'm going into a career where I'm gonna see a lot of stuff. I'm going into a career where there's kind of like a hopelessness, although there is so much hope and so much fire in it, there is an overall hopelessness of like, why, why care? Because not enough people care to make a difference. And my mindset has shifted from when I was younger where I felt so angry because I felt like I couldn't do enough to realizing that I have like this opportunity to live this life on this earth. It's a beautiful planet. It deserves to be fought for. And I'm going to do that the best I can. And I'm going to live my life doing that. But I'm not going to worry about like if I'm not doing enough or how enough people are doing enough. I'm going to focus on what I can do and how to make a good difference and how to make a better world for myself, for my children, if I have children, or just in general for the animals that give me so much joy, I should give it back to them, you know? So I feel like if you have that mindset of like doomsday, like why do I care? Like let's just focus on just enjoying life. Like I'm not gonna try to help the planet. 
I think you should think about the fact that every single little thing you do makes a difference. If you leave a bowl out of water for some wild animals that might be in a forest fire near you. You're making a difference, even if it's small and it's for those souls of those animals. If you pick up a piece of trash, you may be saving a seagull from eating that and that makes a difference. And if you are involved in conservation and you're a part of the career, you're making a long-term difference by inspiring other people to do the same. And maybe right now, there's not enough people to make this gigantic difference to change everything we've ever known when it comes to how we're treating the planet but eventually there could be enough people. So if you wanna be a part of that, stick with it and then believe that there will be enough people eventually. Um, and that's just how I'm managing it. That's how I cope because it is very, very hard for me. I'm very empathetic with nature. I feel very connected to it. It is very hard for me to see things not getting better in some ways, getting better in other ways, and some animals surviving and some animals on the brink of extinction. It's very hard for me. And I cry a lot over it because my emotions just can't, you know, be held down when it comes to animals. But I do think that taking that like half cup full was, that's not right, cup half full rather than cup half empty kind of mentality is really important. It's like the only thing you can do when it comes to the environment and the earth because if we don't do it, then nobody will make a difference. There really will be nobody caring and we can't have that. We are too far along to have that. So we need to have people who have that mindset. So that's just my best advice on that is focus on what difference you can make and remember that if everybody did that, we'd have a much better world. <laughs> So yeah, and then um, basically I had another question that was about advice on being authentic and being confident and I'm still learning more about that my, about myself right now in therapy and just how to be more authentic with my feelings and not try to hide my feelings and just be more open. And another best advice I have on that is think of yourself as like a rare species that like you're the only one of you even though you're one human being you're the only one of you and so if you're authentic you're already being so unique and so incredible and so amazing and so if you feel that way by yourself the confidence kind of comes because when you compare yourself to others it's so easy to be not confident it's so easy to be kind of caught up in your head and think that you have to be like them but if you're just trying to be like you be confident in being like you. You've done it for however many years you've been alive. I've been doing it for 18 years. So just keep doing it and just keep staying confident and that you're unique and that's the best quality you can have. So yeah. Um, and then any other questions that I could talk about will probably happen in the future. Right now, I feel like this Q&A covered most of what people have been asking me and wondering. There are other things that people have been asking about more deeper topics that I will go into after I get back from Denver and have some time to sit outside in nature and kind of like collect my thoughts on that. This is more easy for me to just like give you my gut reaction to these questions. Other questions, I would like to think about them deeper first and really like prepare myself to answer them because it has been a hard year, although it's been a very wonderful evolving year it's been a hard year so um yeah thank you for being here thank you for listening it's almost 20 minutes I'm sorry but um, for the 988 people that might watch this um I love you thank you and just know that you're amazing and I appreciate you for being here and for being on this planet and I will see you in Denver <laughs>